Dr. Pacelli. And good afternoon, everyone. If everyone please turn to Acts chapter 17, we'll read verses 11 and 12. Acts chapter 17, verse 11 and 12. And I'm going to read from the message version. That night, under cover of darkness, their friends got Paul and Silas out of town as fast as they could. They sent them to Berea, where they again met with the Jewish community. They were treated a lot better there than in Thessalonica. The Jews received Paul's message and with enthusiasm and met him with him daily, examining the scriptures to see if they supported what he, Paul, said. A lot of them became believers, including many Greeks, who were prominent in that community, women and men of influence. For those of us in this room who are 63 years of age and older, we have become very personally aware of a thing called the SSA. Now when I say SSA, how many people realize what I'm talking about? All right, a few who are still looking that way. The SSA, for those who are not familiar, is the Social Security Administration. And around 63, you start getting the pronouncement that you're ready for that. And we're aware of that because when you start working for someone, you go, our, our granddaughter just started a, an official job this last week, and she'll get her first paycheck, and as her grandmother said, now you'll get to see how much everybody else takes of it before you get it. That's been the typical thing, like, wow, where did it all go? We invest in our future, but not without a little grumbling along the way. And the SSA, as we know it, is fraught with a lot of difficulties and problems, none the least of which it may not be there when you get there. God also offers an SSA. Not the third tithe. It's not the assistance fund. It's the spiritual security administration. It's also fraught with some difficulties that we grumble about making our investments in the spiritual security administration payment plan. But God's SSA has never been, will never be, in danger of default. Nor will it be in danger of not being there when we need it. In fact, God's SSA builds in its value constantly. The Spiritual Security Administration. How do we invest? And how do we benefit? by searching, by studying, and by applying. S-S-A. Over the past five months, we have heard sermon after sermon, after sermonette, after sermonette, after sermon about the COVID condition, about how it's being a wake-up call, about we have time, about the things that we consider important in our lives, many of them have been eliminated, put on hold, some of them serious hold. We now are being subjected to the air of discontent, distrust, and outright hate brought about the current conditions. Growing up in the church, now my 55th year I think it is, Math, it's a four-letter word. I've heard about these for a long time. I've always kind of wondered if these days would be in my calendar. Now, how long it'll be before Christ actually returns, we don't know. God does have a tendency to set a date and say, cross that line, no further. But he also has a tendency to let that line be like a rubber band 
at his choice. But he does tell us, right here, it starts. My choosing when I pull the trigger. So we don't know. We have been warned. Thus, it is time we dig our inner Berean. It's time we dig our inner Berean. Now that term, dig, me growing up back in the, right at the end of the uh, era of the beatnik and into the era of the hippie, dig like, cool, man. It's like, I'm into it. That's great. I also grew up on a farm. And dig meant you work your <clears throat> proverbial back pockets off. Dig meant work. It could also mean fun, cool. So I say it again. It's time we dig our inner Berean. Point number one, search with purpose. The Bereans with Paul searched the scriptures daily and it was with purpose. They wanted to see whether or not what Paul was saying was the right stuff. Was it true? Now for me, I've had this conversation with a few people. For me, it really works this way because I'm more math unconscious, okay? And it's left brain and I just don't get along. So, I think that's what it is. Anyway, creative aspect of me likes boxes and ideas and concepts. So when I sit down to a sermon, I like to listen to it first. And I look out across here and there are some people who are taking notes and some people who just listen. We've had a tendency to look at each other and say, oh, you're not taking notes. Why aren't you taking notes? God's talking to us. And others say, why are you belaboring the fact? Listen to what the man or woman, man saying. Thing about it is, is this, very simple. Listen. There's a difference between listening and hearing. Hearing is just sound waves bouncing off your ears. Listening, you're absorbing. Maybe not then. Somebody might give you a grenade with a delayed pin. It may be two days from now. Wow, yes, now I get it. Listen. Then listen again. I like to go back and listen again. I started reading the Bible, and I say reading the Bible, I had two other people read to me. They're reading to me. And I think I just lost the voice here. But anyway, you can still hear me. The bottom line is, I listened to Genesis to Malachi in five different versions. Five different translations of the Bible. It's like, whoa. It's amazing what I kept hearing. And I kept hearing a pattern. Fifty-five years, and I just heard the pattern. Talk about your delayed detonation. But I heard it. And that's all that matters. And if you get to a point that you don't understand what you're reading, the answer to getting that answer is so simple. If you choose to go prostrate, flat on your face, or if you just choose to sit there, ask God. God, I didn't understand that. What, what are you saying here? Again, expect the delayed detonation. It doesn't usually come like, hello, less. It'll be a delay. But you ask. You put in your request. You will get it. As Matthew 7, 7, and Luke 9, I believe it is, or 7. I've got Luke 97, and last of mine, Luke, Luke 11, and then 97 verses. Ask, and it will be given to you. Knock, seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be open. That's the key. That door will never hear unless your knuckles go we have to do the asking. James 1, 5. And I'm going to read it from the message. Most of you are going to read it along in the NIV or the King James, New King James, or whatever. The message in this one, again, brings out some very interesting points. James 1, 5 through 8. If you don't know what you're doing, pray to the Father. 
He loves to help. You'll get his help and won't be condescended to when you ask for it. Ask boldly, believingly, without a second thought. People who worry their prayers are like wind-whipped waves. Don't think you're going to get anything from the master that way. Adrift at sea, and get this, keeping all your options open. Like a card dealer. Cards fall out of everywhere. We cannot go before God with cards up our sleeve, and I protect this. When he says, surrender, verbally, intentionally, you are naked, nothing hidden. Point number two, study with focus, not haphazard. Now, you know, I know we can go and say, okay, what am I going to study today? If you have listened to the sermons, and we have a plethora of sermons. I didn't do a count, but I'm going to guess it's well over 3,000, 4,000 more when you go to the UCG sermon page. More than you can listen to one an hour, 24 hours a day, for me, the rest of my normal expected living lifespan. But oh boy. So you can get ideas to study. It's there. All we have to do is we got to reach for it. We have to do the knocking and seeking. Show yourself approved is what Timothy said in 2 Timothy 2.15. We're showing God. We're not showing each other. We're not showing Mr. Creech or anyone else. We're showing God because that's who we deal with every day inside of here. Because if we're not dealing with God, you don't want to know who the other one you're dealing with. Because we all know it's Satan. That's not a game we, any of us have won. And we've all tried to joust. And we've all lost. But show yourself approved to God. And that's through the study. The scriptures found in each one of those sermons will give you some place to start. And places to hook and link others. Before you know it, whoa! Whoa! There's a connection you had never seen before. Build your faith knowledge base. We need to study wide, broadly, a lot of different things. Yes, there's a lot of stuff out there that's literally baloney. But there can be a nugget of truth and it can help you in some other areas. First one you study, though, is God. Get God's word. So that when you do read something else and study, it's like, oh, yeah, that's off the board. You don't get all right. Oh, I wonder. That's odd. Do I? No. Compare it to God. Up, oh, out. Now, that's good. There's a lot of things written. Like I just read the message. Would I use the message Bible for doctrine? If you read it very much, you know you won't. But at times, it brings out terminologies. Like, keep your options open. It says, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways in the New King James. Okay, I can get that. But if I say, ah, you come to this without your, no options. I think we all know exactly what that means. And remember, when you build that knowledge base, when we build our knowledge base, when at Sabbath services, and says, hey, Tony, what are you thinking about this week? What happened? And the first thing that comes out, how are those cults going to happen this year? You know, the first thing that comes out is what's heavy on our mind. Now, for some people, they don't want to say what's heavy on their mind. So they'll choose a light and handy dandy. And if we're paying attention, we'll take that handy and we'll wrap it in God's way and knowledge. So then we direct and help them to direct and have a conversation that glorifies God 
right here amongst God's people on the Sabbath day. The first thing that comes out of your mind is what's heavy on your mind. It's what's, what you're thinking about. And even if the COVID situation just got you all up in a tither, when you wrap it in God, there's no fear. So what? There is going to be worse. And we're going through, we'll get through this. Be sure that that knowledge base, the first thing that's there is God. Number three, apply for results. I think we're all familiar with the fact, and this one I got it down later, James 2, 17, faith without works is dead. We have to apply. Now, it's interesting, talking about study, I read, you know, I'd forgotten, and I go back and look at it. Ecclesiastes 12, 12. Solomon says, you can study to the point that it's absolutely, pfft, you wasted your time. You don't know what to do. You're, you've studied yourself into a corner. Prove all things and hold fast. Once you found the truth, believe me, there's a whole lifetime of other to prove. You take that one, there, I've got that one. And then play biblical Tetris if you want. In everything we do, we need to apply God's way. When we have a conversation with people today, Philippians 2.15 Reading it from the message again. It has a term in there. Where it says, go out in unto or into the world uncorrupted. A breath of fresh in this squalid and polluted society. Sounds pretty familiar, doesn't it? That's our job, whether we're on Facebook, Twitter, in person, on the phone, no matter what it is here, our job for each other and for everyone else is to be a breath of fresh air, not the same old sewer gas that we live in. Go out into this world uncorrupted, a breath of fresh air in a squalid and polluted society. Provide people with a glimpse of good living and of the living God. Not some idea, some metaphoric concept, the living almighty God. Carry the light giving message into the night. It may be bright enough out there right now that you need sunglasses, but as far as the society, they're walking around in the dark as a blind man, stumbling, trying to find their way. And they is us as well. Because at times we stumble and bump our toes. And that's what we're for. We to help each other and to seek God. It says in Hebrews 11, 39, 40, that not one of the individuals with whom kept God's way, none of these, even though their lives of faith were ex exemplary, got their hands on the prize. We haven't seen it either. We've seen it visually. We've had it told to us. God promises it. But we haven't touched it or tasted it. It's like we've, we're all buying a gigantic life insurance policy. And that's exactly what it is. Eternal life insurance policy. From the SSA. The Spiritual Security Administration. Last week, Mr. McLean introduced a word. Hupomeno. Anybody remember him saying that? Hupomeno? Does anyone remember what it means? Hupomeno. It's Hebrew. Well, Greek. All right. It is hupo, meaning under. Meno being abide. So you abide under or with somebody. Literally, it means to remain under, but not. And please understand this one. 
not to simply be simply with resignation. Oh, yeah, I'm doing that because they're telling me to. God wants me to do this because Eeyore, you know, Winnie the Pooh, well, it's a great day out there. It probably will rain tomorrow. All right. Now, granted, Tigger's a little off the other side. But it's great, but it's fine out here. No, middle of the road. Winnie will sit there and say, yeah, you know, we're alive. It's good. Hupomeno, the idea of enduring, not just to grin and bear it. When I was growing up, we, I milked cows a lot. And we had one milk cow called Guernsey. And she would milk hard. And you grab a hold of the teats and you squeeze and these micro tiny little holes, I could literally cut a cat in half practically at 10 feet. And she would just put her nose into the wall and just grin and bear it. Now if I didn't milk her, it'd be a lot worse. If we just grin and bear it, we don't benefit. And what's more important, no one around us benefits either. But hupomeno means to remain under trials in such a way that it glorifies God. We endure in a way that everyone around us, in other words, a breath of fresh air, everybody's got this problem, we're a breath of fresh air. Well, what? what, what Come on, man, why aren't you just up in the gathers and all this problem? Because God's got her under control. Oh. Yeah. God has it under control. Instead of seeking our ways to get out from under trials and be relieved from the pressure, we endure to glorify God. Okay, so while we're here under the COVID, and all that it will be, and believe me, it's going to be more. We haven't seen the last of this. We should, read must, endure, not with fear, worry, or frustration, or to just get through it, but with a vibrant hope. Because of all people on the face of the earth, we know what hope is. It's there. God tells us all the time, as long as we are searching, studying, and applying. SSA, the Spiritual Security Administration. Unless we do this, Philippians 2.15, as we said, go out uncorrupted, a breath of fresh air amongst the squalid of society, bringing a glimpse of good living of the living God, bringing light into the darkness. Unless we do this, we cannot do it without we first tap our inner Berean, searching the scriptures daily, contending among ourselves with God for what is true and applying it. Searching, studying, applying each and every day. The Word of God should be, must be, our vital connection. Why? To be filled with the Word of God, to be empowered by the Holy Spirit. That is our only ticket to safety. Period. In order to walk justly, to love mercy, and walk humbly before our God. We dig our inner Berean because this opportunity is far too precious a gift to waste.